welcome to my first video on how I paint and weather my models. This one's a lovely Puma from Dragon. As you can see, I've added a few little bits of filler, which is a green around the wheels. Added a few brass clasps, so the, the tools, and accentuated the, uh, the weld seams with a woodworking tool. Uh, the model was primed with some just uh, normal Halfords car primer, which I took outside, and you can see it's done. I then gave the model a pre-shadow with some Vallejo Air Camouflage Black Brown. Just put it in all the uh, recesses, all around the panel lines and uh, wherever you think it might need going. Once the shadow's done, we gave it the base coat of a Tammy Air Dark Yellow, which is a, a good colour for their Dunkle Girl. Over the shadows, as you can see, kicking out. Some of the panels don't go over the uh, the shadow lines there just let it flow just finishing off on the turret and you can see on the turntable nice uh, tammy 88 give it its base coat Next I'll mix uh, a little bit of white with it, thin it down with some of their own thinner, and a little bit of water as well if it uh, starts to dry. Highlight the panel lines, picking out the doors and any areas that might get light, like along here on the top when the driver sits. Do a line and then fade it out. Next for the camouflage, I use Vallejo Flat Brown which if you're using it in an airbrush does need to be thin, so use their own thinner. Use the painting uh, instructions from Dragon, but I chose to depict a different vehicle, so I did a slightly different camouflage as I can use some um, different numbers that are supplied in their kit. Green was next, dark green and park green. Tamiya thinned again with her own thinners and just added some more models to it. Kept looking at the, uh, the painting directions from Dragon um, and then making me own up a little bit like the crew would if they can't get it in the field. Now that the whole model's camouflaged, time to add a filter. Using MIG filter, thinned with some enamel thinners. Thin quite heavy, don't let it pull like a wash. Let it just flow all over the whole surface, which tones it and it gives it a slightly different tone. Once that's dry, next paint the exhaust. Just mix the uh, London grey and the white. Make it quite thin, try and pick out the areas where you think the uh, later on the the, uh, the rust and the paint might have not uh, worn away so much. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just picking out the edges there, adding a bit of uh, adding a bit of white. Time to paint the uh, the periscopes. They were made of a lot of a lot of the times out of uh, Bakelite material, which was like black and brown. So I'm just picking them out there. First umber and then some black brown over the top. Here we're using London grey, German grey, mixed together, just painting the periscopes. Now it's time to paint the, the tools and the jerry cans. These three colours are all mixed together. Picking out the jack, then the fire extinguishers. And then you can see me pointing out fire extinguishers and the jerry cans. Slightly different shades on them all, and again on the, uh, the fire extinguisher. Gonna use the same colour just to paint around the periscope housing and the circle and the, uh, the sight on the turret roof. Now it's time to uh, paint the jerry can. Mix the two greys together, pick the jerry can out. I'm also gonna use this color on the aerial mounts, which I'll show you in a sec. There you go, there's two on this vehicle, being a command vehicle. I've just picked it out as well. To highlight the uh, upper areas of the model, just mix these oils together, the buff and a bit of white, lay them in, just on the edges there, and using a soft brush, blend them in. This can take some time and it's quite subtle. Here I've added a few of the dots and I'll just blend them in with a flat brush moistened with uh, some enamel thinners. Around the top, here on the top of the turret, brush it downwards. Next, the more rust onto the exhaust. I paint it like a filter. Mix it together, thin it with water and just layer it on. To add even more colour, I use Mix uh, Light Rust Wash. 
over the previous uh, painting. To enrich the colour even more, use all three of these washes, thin again with some enamel thinner until happy with the look. Here I wanted to add a bit of dark rust, use the wash and a bit of sponge. Tiles are never really black, so using the dark rubber from the uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces range and a bit of their retarder and some water, just painted around the, uh, the wheels all of the vehicle, we're pointing them out, don't forget to spare. Also use it on the padlocks. Happy with everything, uh, clear gloss, uh, no need to thin this down and just spray it all over the model. This helps seal the paint underneath for the next weathering stages and it gives a bit of the base for the, uh, the decals, although I will add more gloss in a second. Here I'm just using some uh, acrylic gloss varnish, painted on with a flat brush, then mark fit, brush that on, apply the decals, use the Q-tip to remove any excess fluid. More gloss varnish just to seal them in. Always brush downwards because that's the way the runs and the dirt later on is going to be going to be shown. This only takes a few minutes to dry and then you can get on with the next stage. Once that's dry, just use some enamel thinners, brush it on the model, and this helps with the application of the, uh, the washes and the, uh, the cleanup. To add some staining, I'm going to use a panel liner and a cocktail stick and just flick it onto the model, which uh, adds a few stains. For the wash, I'm going to use Humbrol Black and Dark Brown and some of the panel liner. Mix it all together, again with some uh, enamel thinner. And just let it flow around raised detail along panel lines, around bolts, welds, and all edges that you might want to add a shadow and which might collect a little bit of dirt. Once you're happy, after about five minutes letting it dry, just use some clean enamel thinner and just remove any excess where you've overpainted it. Finally, uh, once it's dry, I like to mat it all down with some varnish. You can see the effect of the wash all around the detail and in the panel lines. It now needs even more time to dry before the next weathering stages. So thanks for watching my first video. Please comment and like and subscribe, it's free. And I'll see you on the next one.